basic understanding of how air brake systems work can help you avoid common problems and could make a life-saving difference in an emergency. From the driver's seat, air brake controls may look familiar. A foot pedal controls the service brake, and a knob that pulls in and out controls the emergency or parking brake. In vehicles with air brakes, however, the service brake pedal actually operates a valve called the treadle valve. When the brakes are applied, the treadle valve opens and pressurized air rushes through a series of lines, relays, valves, tanks, and chambers, exerting pressure that ultimately slows the axle and wheels. The heart of the air brake system is the compressor. The compressor draws air from the atmosphere and pumps it into the system. The brake system is a closed system, meaning that air can't escape from a properly functioning brake system unless it's released deliberately. So, just like a basketball being inflated by a hand pump, the more air pumped in, the greater the pressure inside. The governor controls the amount of air the compressor pumps into the system maintaining a safe operating range between 90 and 120 pounds per square inch, or PSI, about three to four times the pressure inside an automobile tire. When pressure in the system drops below 90 PSI, the governor signals the compressor to pump more air. And once pressure reaches 120 PSI, the governor signals the compressor to shut down. An electronic sensor mounted on the governor triggers audible and visual alarms if air pressure in the system drops below or exceeds safe operating levels. From the compressor and governor, air moves through the main air line underneath the bus to the air dryer. The dryer pulls moisture from the air and expels it from the system. You might wonder where this moisture comes from, so let's pause for a quick science lesson. The air around us always contains a certain amount of moisture. Clouds carry lots of moisture, but even clear air holds some. Weather forecasters call this relative humidity. Generally speaking, the warmer the air, the more moisture it can hold. When outside air is drawn into the compressor and pressurized, it becomes warmer. When it leaves the compressor and moves into an area with slightly lower pressure, it cools down. When that happens, a very small amount of moisture is deposited on the walls of the brake line. This same thing happens on cool summer nights when moisture in the air is deposited as dew on the ground. But moisture can mean danger for air brakes. During cold weather, it can freeze, block the airlines, and cause brake failure. Even in mild weather, moisture can cause corrosion that can clog airlines. Now let's return to the brake system. Moisture collects at the bottom of the air dryer, where it is periodically vented from the system by a blast of air. Next, the air is routed to a large storage tank, which is divided into three compartments. The first compartment is called the wet tank. This tank supplements the work of the air dryer and removes any remaining moisture from the air. The middle compartment is the primary tank, which stores air for the rear brakes. The third compartment is the secondary tank. It stores air for the front brakes. Notice that the primary tank is much larger than the secondary tank. That's because the rear brakes provide about 80% of the vehicle's braking power and require much more air. Remember the treadle valve that opens when the brake pedal is depressed? When the operator depresses the brake pedal, the treadle valve releases air from the storage tanks into a directional box, which diverts air to both the front and rear brakes. Now let's follow the airline from the storage tank to the rear brake chambers, where the heavy brake work gets done. The rear brake chambers actually have two braking systems that combine to create a fail-safe system. If the air brake system fails and loses air pressure, the emergency brake sets automatically. Let's look inside the rear brake chamber. The rear section of the brake chamber houses the emergency brake, which also serves as the parking brake. The emergency brake is a powerful spring that applies more than 25,000 pounds of pressure against the inside of a heavy steel brake drum. Since the drum is securely bolted to the rear axle, this spring prevents the bus from moving. It takes an opposing force, provided by air pressure in the brake system, to move the spring back away from the drum and keep it there as long as there's enough air pressure in the brake system. If pressure is lost and the brakes fail during operation, the spring returns to its original position against the brake drum, providing emergency stopping power. While this braking action can't easily be seen, it can be heard. When the parking brake is released, 
the force of air rushing into the brake chamber makes a distinct sound. It makes an equally distinct sound when the brake is set and air is released from the brake chamber. Now let's take a closer look at the brake chamber to see how the S-cam or foundation brakes work. When the emergency brake is released and air forces the brake spring away from the brake drum, a rod connected to the brake spring assembly pushes out and away from the brake chamber. This rod connects the emergency brake to the service brake. On the road, when the operator depresses the brake pedal, increased air pressure pushes the rod away from the chamber, causing it to push against an adjustable lever-like mechanism called a slack adjuster. While one end of the slack adjuster moves away from the brake chamber, the other, called a camshaft, turns an S-shaped cam that's attached to the end of the shaft. As this S-cam turns, it forces two very thick brake pads, or shoes, apart and against the sidewall of the brake drum. This causes friction, which slows, or stops, the spinning axle and wheels. The amount of friction necessary to stop a 15-ton bus generates a lot of heat. If the service brakes are overworked because they're used too frequently and too forcefully, on a long steep hill for example, they can overheat, lose effectiveness, and in some cases fail completely. Improperly adjusted slack adjusters can be another source of ineffective braking or brake failure. When slack adjuster tension is correct, the brake pads make solid contact with the brake drum. If the slack adjuster isn't set properly, the brake pads make only light or no contact with the brake drum and braking power is lost. While most school buses today have automatic slack adjusters, models made before 1994 may require manual adjustment. It's critically important that manual slack adjusters are always properly adjusted. Since the front brakes don't contain a fail-safe function and don't deliver as much braking force as the rear brakes, the front brake chambers are significantly smaller. Air enters the front chambers only when the service brake pedal is depressed. Each time the operator releases the service brake, air that was used to slow the vehicle is released from the system and air pressure drops slightly. A well-maintained and functioning brake system can sustain numerous brake applications before the compressor has to pump more air into the system. But, needless or repeated use of the brakes can deplete air faster than the compressor can replace it, creating a potentially dangerous condition. If air pressure drops below safe levels, both a red warning light and audible alarm are triggered. As pressure continues to drop, the dashboard pressure gauge drops into the red zone. If you find yourself in this situation, stay calm. Remember that emergency braking power is just a moment away. Your first thought should be to find a route that gets you safely off the road as soon as possible. Your emergency brakes will work, but they'll also begin to overheat, especially if you're headed downhill, and they'll begin to fade or lose effectiveness. Air brake systems are designed and engineered for maximum safety. By operating them properly and staying alert for warning signs, you can help ensure that they do their job without fail.